ho, 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 boy. Some top shelf drama between Treasury Secretary Mnuchin and head of the Federal Reserve Jerome Powell just spilled over in congressional stimulus talks. Looks like Christmas came early for this finance nerd. Biden's treasury pick may be coming, but for now Mnuchin is the one yelling. So let's bang my two favorite action figures together and get to the bottom of the story. First, a little background. Basically, the Federal Reserve is an independent offshoot of the treasury who's in charge of making sure that if you're an entity that's large, stable, and needs some cash, there's a check with your name on it. Knowing you hear about trillions of aid going to corporations, these are the programs people are talking about. It's Oprah Stimulus. You get $10 billion. You get $10 billion. Chase Bank, check under your seat. $10 million. Now this isn't the Federal Reserve just cutting a check to every entity on Bernie Sanders' enemy list. Instead, it's the Federal Reserve buying their assets for cash. Think cash for gold, except bonds instead. Are you a bank that needs cash fast? Well then swing on down to Jerome Powell's finance barn, where we're in the business of buying. Do you wish you could be lending out fresh money, but you're stuck sitting on 10 year old loans? Sold! Own billions of dollars in government bonds maturing in 5 years? Who do I make the check out to? We're buying $120 billion of assets a month, and we'll increase that if you have a good offer. Remember, when it comes to Federal Reserve spending, we have no reservations. And scene. Of course, I want to emphasize that, because these programs are exchanging cash for assets, the Federal Reserve doesn't just break even on their investments, they consistently actually make a profit that they send to the treasury to pay for parts of the budget. We're not actually spending trillions of dollars, we're investing it. Of course, the goal here isn't for the government to collect on that sweet, sweet half a percentage point of interest. Instead, we're trying to get fresh money to the banks so that, if you're a viable business that needs money to weather this economic storm, there won't be someone out there who will give you a loan. Now, if you're curious about how effective this program has been, just look at the stock market compared to any other metric of economic success out there. Putting money into structurally sound companies is perceived to be safe despite the current crisis because they have a cash flow backstop. With that background, let's get right to the drama. Chairman of the Federal Reserve Jerome Powell and Secretary of the Treasury Mnuchin are on opposite sides of the same coin. They both agree that Congress needs to do something. I mean, come on guys, it's been months but they disagree on the role of the Federal Reserve in that recovery. Jerome Powell is pushing to keep that gravy train rolling until there are substantial economic gains. On the other hand, Mnuchin has pointed to how easily and cheaply borrowers are currently able to tap the capital markets as ample evidence that it's fine to wind down these emergency programs. With that, let's get to the fight. First, Jerome Powell, seen here predicting corporate America's future. On Wednesday, Jerome Powell announced his plan to extend and expand the Federal Reserve's bond buying program, saying, Now that we can kinda see the light at the end of the tunnel, it would be bad to see people losing their businesses, their lives work in some cases, because they couldn't last another few months. Never fear because the central bank is here. Let's get as much debt as possible to the American businesses. Now that might not have the same inspirational ring as Congress's ability to hand out cash, but hey, the central bank's working with what they got here. His plan seems to be continuing to pump money into the system through buying bank assets until the labor market recovers and inflation is back up to a steady 2% average. Now that's boring speak for until everything gets better. If you listen to him speak, he seems to be seeing a lot of uncertainty in the recovery and anticipates it could take years. On the other hand, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, who's of the opinion that the Federal Reserve has done enough and boy do those laurels look comfortable. 
in the finance equivalent to publicly releasing a diss track, Secretary Mnuchin wrote a letter to Jerome Powell requesting he return almost half a trillion dollars in cash. Now I'm going to translate what he wrote from finance to English. When the crisis hit in March, corporations weren't able to borrow money. And when they did, they had to pay a ton in interest. Banks came dangerously close to running out of cash. Today, corporations are able to borrow at almost no interest. Plus, if you're a state, city, or individual, banks are flush with cash and they'll give you a loan. So guess what? You can stop what you're doing and just chill out. Secretary Mnuchin further argues financial conditions are quite strong. The good news is the markets have recovered significantly. Companies don't need more loans. Now, Mnuchin isn't delusional thinking, well, the economy is great again. Find me an aircraft carrier and a mission accomplished banner ASAP. I have a speech to make. Instead, he argues that this liquidity problem is solved, cash is aplenty, and now the onus of the recovery is exclusively on states to open up and Congress to get us past the finish line by distributing aid instead of debt. Let's not tie up half a trillion dollars in trying to solve a problem that no longer exists. So that sounds like a pretty compelling argument. What's the potential downside to Mnuchin's approach? To answer that question, enter Mnuchin's replacement, ex-head of the Federal Reserve Janet Yellen. She headed the Federal Reserve during the last economic recovery. And in a rare show of unity, both Doves and Hawks came together to agree that she cut off the Federal Reserve's bond buying programs way too early in the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis. At the time, she saw sufficient cash in the system and falling unemployment. So why not take a step back? Yellen likened her decision to taking the Fed's foot off the gas pedal of accommodative borrowing costs, defending the move as a way to keep the economy from overheating and inflation from significantly overshooting our objectives. Unfortunately, banks are a lot more likely to loan a lot of money when a steady flow of cash is coming in from the other side. Let's just say you earn $40,000 a year and live pretty well. Suddenly your employer looks at how much you have in savings and says, well, at this snapshot in time, I think you have enough money and you're spending well. I'm going to stop paying you. You're probably going to stop spending the amount of money you used to. If the economy isn't recovered enough to pick up some of the slack of increased revenue, you could have a problem. Janet Yellen's apprehension unnecessarily slowed the recovery and limited access to people who needed loans, especially minority communities who have the hardest time getting them in the first place. In fact, Jerome Powell's potentially overly aggressive response to COVID is in a major part due to the Federal Reserve doing some soul searching after the Yellen term and deciding we should be placing less emphasis on inflation and more emphasis on increasing employment. Now that she is set to head the treasury, most people expect that she is going to be more of a Mnuchin than a Powell. Jerome Powell's term, on the other hand, is set to expire in 2022, so he's not going anywhere. Now, Before I go, I want to answer one final question. How does any of what I just talked about relate to the congressional stimulus talks? Well, the CARES Act that Congress passed in the spring created two special programs for the Federal Reserve. One that specifically lent cash to banks for small business loans and another that lent money directly to states and local governments instead of banks. Mnuchin ended these two programs leading to pushback from Jerome Powell and Democrats, citing the fact that we're in a pandemic and come on, small businesses? I thought we both liked that one. These programs are set to permanently expire at the end of December. And the specific debate going on in Congress today is, should the next administration's treasury secretary have the ability to reopen these programs without congressional reapproval? So that's the latest in this stimulating Federal Reserve debate. Until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Now, before I start begging for subscribers and patrons, if you found this episode interesting, I'm going to be providing links in the outro to videos describing, first, the Federal Reserve's programs that are in limbo, 
Second, how the Federal Reserve is getting the trillions of dollars to pay for these assets. And lastly, how Jerome Powell's new inflation strategy works. Hey YouTube, sorry it took me so long to publish this video, but I'm a New Yorker and the storm knocked out my phone and internet. I'd like to thank to my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. To learn more about these Federal Reserve programs that are currently in limbo, click here. To learn about how the Federal Reserve is getting the money to pay for these programs, click here. And lastly, to learn about Jerome Powell's new inflation ideology, click right over here. Until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that.